Let's look at the message for this afternoon. First of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Glory to the Lord. That's first of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Worthy is the King of Kings. So when we all have 1st of Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and men, it's up on the screen. And we read the scripture, brethren, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And the scripture says to us, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. This afternoon we're going to have a look at a title of this message, A Door of Opportunity. Glory to the Lord. God always leaves a door of opportunity, brethren. No matter what we are going through, there is always a door of an opportunity. When we read this scripture that we read just now, it says that there is no temptation that can come upon us that is not something that's common to man. In other words, There's nothing that you've not yet experienced that someone under the sun has not experienced in the past already. But it says that God is faithful. God is faithful because He knows how much we can endure. He knows how much we can how much we can go the mile. God knows all things. He knows our weaknesses and our strengths. He knows our desires, our commitments. And He knows our love for Him. So therefore, brethren, if God is faithful, it says He will not suffer us to be tempted above what He already knows we can handle. And if there is such temptation that comes upon us that we think this is stronger than anything that I can handle. Well, know this, that it is not going to be greater than what God already knows you can handle. Hallelujah. Because God is faithful. God's plan was not for your destruction. God's plan was for your salvation and eternal life. God has never lied when He has spoken to us His promises. They are all truth. And when He says that He will not suffer us to be tempted above what we are able to handle, then we have to realize something important here. Why do we find certain battles and temptations to be so hard that sometimes we even say that it's greater than we are? And I'll tell you what is the hard thing, brethren. It is the hardness of our hearts towards humbling ourselves to the Word of God. That's what we find hard. That's the biggest battle, our self. But the Bible also says that God will, with the temptation, make a way to escape. That we may be able to bear it. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to focus on something here. When temptations come, 
brethren. You know, James said that the temptations come and people are drawn away of our own fleshly lusts. The desires that are in our flesh that often, if not controlled and put in check, which that is done by prayer, the Word of God, and obedience to Him. But if we do not do those things, then we are drawn away by the lusts of our own flesh. We find ourselves to then be Seduced is what the Bible says. Seduced by the lusts of the flesh. And when seduced by the lusts of the flesh, that is when things can get complicated. But God knows that His Spirit and His Word is more than enough to always give us the victory. And so, when we look at how does the temptation work, well, usually it starts in the mind. And when the temptation comes, first there's like a, something we see, something of like a voice, and it's very quick in the mind. But you see, the temptation often comes, and it tries to cloud our judgment. It tries to cloud our seeing the Word of God in those moments. That we do not think on the Word of God in those moments of temptation. That we not remember anything about God in those moments. This is what sin comes to do. Temptation comes to do that. It's like, it's like somebody puts like a, a cloud over our mind and we're like trying to look past it but it's like a dark cloud that's come upon the front of our eyes you see when we look at Ephesians Ephesians let's look at that Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 and 18 the scripture says this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. You see, so people often walk in a vanity of their mind. That means people following every single thing that pops into their mind or that what they think is of their own mind. But we are called to have the mind of Christ. We are called to know His Word. That our mind be saturated with the Word of God. That in everything we do, everything we see, we are always giving God the glory and His, His Word be saturated in our mind. And verse 18 says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of on their heart. So often what happens, brethren, is once again, we go to when the heart gets hardened. We find temptations hard. We find obeying the Word of God hard. Who can follow it? But once again, I remind us all that the hardness is the hardness of the heart. Because what makes it easy to follow the Lord is what the Lord said. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, with everything. But when we don't do that, we are placing ourselves before God. And when we place ourselves before God, we find it hard to submit to His Word. So it's the hardness of the heart. And when we have a hardness of the heart, then there is in part a blindness that comes. As it mentions there, because of the blindness of the heart, 
Hallelujah. Are we starting to see, brethren, that we need to be of those who are quick to humble ourselves before the Word of God at the teachings of Jesus so that God can raise us up, so that we may prove what is that good and what is that acceptable and perfect will of God in our lives. Now, when we look at what tries to make us fall into sin, brethren, you see, we did mention that it's the desires of the flesh. There are things also that start in the mind, but through the desires of the flesh. We can look at a clear example of that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. When mankind had his fall, we can see it right there. It says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not die. So he was speaking to her. She was processing his words in her mind. That's where the attack was. She knew the commandment of the Lord. The commandment of the Lord was, You shall not eat nor touch of the fruit of the knowledge, of, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But here then we have an Eve who is letting her mind be entertained with things that are contrary to the command that she already knew. The command of God said, you shall not eat of it. You shall not touch it. And yet we have her now entertaining that thought of those words saying, you shall surely not die. But then let's have a look at what it says in verse 5. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So now all of a sudden, it looks like a good offer. And verse 6 says, And when the woman saw, you see, so now that she had listened to what the enemy said in her mind, she was now looking at that same tree of the knowledge of good and evil that in the past she might have just gone past there, looked at it and said, can't eat from that. And wouldn't have given it a second thought. But now, because she started giving it a second thought, she started also seeing it differently. She started feeling about it differently. That's why it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, well, why wasn't it good for food before? But now, all of a sudden, it's good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So this was because she put the hardness of her heart. She should never have gotten into a conversation with the devil. She should have never have even listened to what was being said. She had the commandment of God already. But it was only when she started listening to that voice, she started to see things differently. She started to... You know, it became pleasant to her eyes. Whereas before, it wasn't pleasant. Glory to the Lord. And that's exactly what happens with sin. When we have the commandment of God, and we harden our heart, and we put ourselves before, and we don't want to obey the Word of God, well, then we open ourselves up to obey those other voices which go contrary to the Word of God. And when we go contrary to the Word of God, all of a sudden we're justifying ourselves for what we do, for what we say, for where we go. All these things. Because all of a sudden now, God's such a merciful God 
that he knows my heart and he knows I'm not ready. Glory to the Lord. And so then we blind ourselves, we become blinded with the hardness of our heart. We allow ourselves to be blinded in our heart. And we allow it to be darkened by the enemy. He doesn't waste time. Because we have the commandment, but we choose not to follow it. So therefore we take choice to listen to the voice of the evil one. And when he comes and he gives us that offer, he always speaks with a bit of truth and a bit of lie. But it looks so appealing, it looks so tasty, it looks so pleasant to the eyes. It becomes, it feels so good in the emotions. But yet, its end is death. Its end is destruction. And that's what happened at the Garden of Eden. Yet the Lord has said, when we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. Yet the Lord has said, it's in the middle of the heat of the battle. It's in the middle of when them temptations start coming. It's in the middle of when that voice starts to speak. And the Spirit of God who is in us must flow through with the abundance of His Word. And we need to cut it at the beginning, right there. Right at the beginning of when, as soon as that thought crosses and it says, Hey, that's against the Word of God. Out in the name of Jesus. Don't give it a second thought. Because you see in the second part of this verse where it says, but, let's, let's look at the whole thing. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able to, to, to take, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. In other words, when that thought to disobey God, when that temptation in the form of the thought comes, at the very moment that that's there, there is also the way of escape right there as well. Praise the Lord. And that way of escape, he says, is there so that you may be able to bear it. In other words, that when that temptation starts to come, you and I can choose the way of escape instead of continuing to follow in the thoughts and in the emotions that start to lead in the door of the temptation. So instead, in our mind, you and I are the doorkeeper. Your heart, you and I are the doorkeeper. But you find yourself now with two doors, the one that will lead going straight into that temptation and the other one that you can escape that temptation before it gets stronger, before the voices start to overtake, before those thoughts start to become pleasant, before the eyes start to see it differently, before it starts to deceive us. Because you know what? The devil's been doing this for a lot longer than what we've been alive. He's been doing this for thousands of years. He's an expert at what he does. He did it to the angels that were up in heaven. Who were in the presence of God. Who could see the throne of the Lord. How will he not do it with us who have not seen God? Glory to the name of Jesus. And so when we choose the escape, you know, that's a very simple choice too. Let's look at John chapter 14 verse 6. In John chapter 14 verse 6, the scripture says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Over there we read that he would leave the way to escape. Jesus is that way to escape. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So from the moment we choose Jesus, we're choosing that door of escape. We're choosing that way to escape. We're choosing life over death. We're choosing truth over the lie, over the deception. Hallelujah. And when we make that choice to escape through the door, which is Jesus, the living word, then God will give the victory. And how beautiful it is when God has given the victory. Because when we have been in the temptation, or when the temptation has started to want to come upon us and creep up upon us, and that is the moment that we got to choose that door, which is Jesus. That is the moment when we got to come before the Lord. That is the moment in which we must bring our life into prayer. That is the moment when we must call on the promises of the Lord. That is the moment when the scripture is needed in our hearts. So that the temptation doesn't enter in our heart. But that the scripture of God be a shield in our heart to protect us from the darts of the wicked one. And that when that is trying to get in us, we quote the scripture and we say, your word says to me, Lord, and I believe it. Call on to me and I shall answer you and show you great and mighty works that you do not know. And when those thoughts, the enemy is trying to bring them in. Then we're casting it out. We're drowning out those, those words of the enemy because we're crying out to the Lord inside us, in our mind. And we're breaking, we're breaking uh, in the spirit before the Lord. We're crying out to the Lord and we're calling on His promises. And God is faithful. Hallelujah. And so this, brethren, means that to do that, it means that firstly, we need to trust the Lord. We need to believe His Word. We need to wait on Him. We need to call on the name of Jesus. We need to believe that Jesus is Jesus. So that the clouded mind... Or that clouded thought will be lifted upon them. That it will go away. And when that clouded thought of doubt, of fear, of temptation, of contrary to the word of God goes. Then we will have the victory. And that's a beautiful feeling, brother. When we are battling through. Remember, we have the door of opportunity there. That cloud over our mind and over the eyes wants to stop you and I from calling on the name of God, from remembering the Word of God. But when we come before the Lord and we humble ourselves and we cry unto the Lord and we remind the Lord of His promises and we cry unto the Lord, then God gives the victory. That's a spiritual battle that happens at that time, brethren. And the Bible tells us how to overcome. The rest is up to you and me, putting it into practice. But in order for us to have the Word, we need to read the Word. In order for us to cry unto the Lord and pray unto Him, we need to have a prayer life. We need to have a communion with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But once God gives the victory and He brings that beautiful peace upon us, now it's time to praise the Lord. It's time to sing songs of victory to the Lord. Because the enemy has tried to cause us to stumble. The enemy of our soul has tried to cause us to fall into sin. The enemy of our soul has tried to cause us to doubt in the Word of God. But now in the victory, God increases the faith, increases our 
love for God increases our authority in the Lord and all those beautiful things that come with the victory you know if there's no battles there's no victory but the Lord shows us here that in order for us to stand firm and strong and above and to also win the victory we need to ensure brethren that when we learn the Word of God that we apply it in our life that we obey it because when we obey God's Word just like Eve brethren when she was going past that tree she would never have given it a second thought and that's the same when we're, when we're going past some place and our eyes might have looked at something that might be temptation but our eyes looked once and they don't look again because then the Word of God quickly comes because the Spirit of God is faster than the evil one and when the Word is when we are saturated in the Word of God straight away we would see something that is not right with the Lord something that does not agree in our life and we would say the Lord rebukes Satan and we will quote scripture scripture that is in our heart scripture that is in our mind and truly then the word of God is fulfilled when he says the angel of the Lord encamps about those who fear him and defends them defends them from falling into temptations and sins defends them from many wicked things and so when we don't give those things a second thought brethren we've won the victory hallelujah Praise be the name of Jesus. This is what God has given to us as a church, as a people of God, as individuals. This is why God has put His Spirit in us, brethren, so that we can call on the name of God. Because we couldn't do that before. Remember, we, we, because of the sin, our connection with God was severed. But when we came to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we believed His Word, that when He says God is God, and that His Son is the living Word of God, and that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, rose again on the third day, and He's seated at the right hand of the Father from that very moment, and from when I repent of my sins, from that moment the Holy Spirit came to dwell in my heart. And has given us power to become sons of God. So when he's given us power to become sons of God, that means we are no longer under the sway of the evil one. Because that's what the devil does to the minds of people who do not have Jesus. They are under the, under the influence and under the sway of the evil one. Because the word of God, which cuts spiritually they do not have it in their mind they do not have it in their hearts it doesn't abound in them so this is why whenever someone doesn't is not a christian someone doesn't know the word the enemy comes whenever he wants and he can cloud their judgment he can cloud their minds and people fall into temptations but as children of god as sons of god being given power to become sons of God then God has given us authority that the enemy do not come and cloud our judgment or cloud our eyes but that we see it for what it is by the power of God and through the spirit that God has given us so that when these things come the spirit of God working in us will tell us don't look at that again don't say those things don't go there and that's the spirit of the living God guiding us because the spiritual things are discerned with the spiritual the carnal things are carnal are carnally discerned but the spiritual are spiritual and so then anything that goes contrary to the Word of God straight away we would not even think of it twice. We would know already. 
This is truth. This is darkness. This is truth. This is lie. This is light. This is darkness. That's what the Spirit of God does. Because He doesn't want us playing around in those moments of temptation. Or even coming into those moments of temptation. Because remember that all them temptations come as a very quick thought. Like a dart goes back. And that's like lightning fast. Sometimes it goes straight to the emotions. And it wants to make us get out of control. Sometimes it might get somebody angry very, very quick. But still, the Spirit of God is faster. And He is dwelling in us to lead us, to guide us to all victory. There are moments as well, brethren, that you might even end up leaving your house. And as you're leaving your house, the Lord says, pray. Because then God already knows what's going to happen after. And when we obey God, you see, there's the humbleness of heart. When we obey God, then God protects us of what happens after. But if we don't obey God, then when we go... We fall into what happens and it's like, oh, that's why God told me what He was telling me. So you see, it comes back to the condition of our heart. If we're hardening ourselves to the Scripture and to the voice of the Spirit of God, which only leads us in obedience to the Word, then that's what's going to cause the consequences later down the track of the temptations. But when we humble ourselves unto the Lord, then God protects us. He guides us. He helps us. And when those things try to come upon us, straight away, like the sword of the Spirit, which is, which is quick and powerful, alive and powerful, and that is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and of spirit and of joints and of marrow, and which is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, it shall cut away with all the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. And so, beloved brethren, let us remember then that there is always that door of opportunity Let's finish up with that verse. Going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Let's read it again. And just remember, brethren, if in your life, if in our lives, we are battling still with certain temptations, just remember, put away the hardness of the heart and you will have victory. Because... God has said in His Word, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able to. You see, because our strength relies on Jesus. That's why the doorway to escape is Jesus. This is the difference as to why a lot of people in the world who try to give up bad habits fail. They can't. This is why people who have strongholds in their life, they can't seem to break away. Because when we try to do things in our own strength, in our own mind, we will always fail. But when we take the doorway of opportunity, which is Jesus, then we will always win. Because Jesus has won victory after victory after victory, and He does not have defeat. We are defeated when we try to do it our way. But when we put away our hardened hearts, and we obey the Word of God, and we humble ourselves to the Lord, and to the Spirit of the living God, then God gives us the victory, like He says. He says, Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way, which is Jesus, to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Glory to the name of Jesus. 
because that is the greatest victory, brethren. Jesus is your victory and mine. Hallelujah. But knowing how to obtain that victory and how to stand, as I said before, and I finish with this, let us put away our heart and hearts to the Word of God. Let us obey His Word. Let us obey His Holy Spirit, which leads us in obedience to His Word. And when we have put away our heart and heart, we won't find it hard. When thoughts come, when our eyes see things that were hard for us to leave before, that were difficult, that we saw them as temptations, but then God reduces them and makes them as nothing. Praise be the name of Jesus. Before, inside us, they were like a raging storm that we could not control it. Almost like when the disciples were in the boat and they were out in sea. You can imagine that it's like those raging winds and the storm out in the sea is like the raging of our emotions and our feelings and the temptations that come upon it. And they're all like, hey, we're all going to die here. We're all going to sink. We're going to fall into the temptation. But then you see a Jesus who's there as well. And he's walking above the waters. He's walking above all that. And we see him. You know, Peter tried to take that step of faith at first. He goes, Master, if it's you, command me to come out. And he goes, come. And he started to take that step of faith. He started to walk through that way. Jesus being the door. But when he focused on the other side, which was all the boisterous winds and the everything else, he started to sink. But when we keep our eyes on the Lord, on the Word of God, and we do not give place for those other voices which go contrary to the Word of God, then we will not be giving place to temptation. And just as Jesus, when Jesus said, Come, be still, the winds came down. The storms came down. And that's the same thing. In your mind, in your emotions, you could say that there's a world there. There's a universe there. You know, there's that saying that says, every mind is its own world. But you know what? God has given you power to become sons of God. And that means that just as Jesus calmed the storm, you've been given power in Christ Jesus and authority to calm the storms of temptations and emotions and Lusts that want to get out of control in your life. And that's only in Jesus Christ. Of ourselves, we become worse than animals. But in Christ Jesus, He gives us authority and power to take back that control which the devil has wanted to take from us and to steal from us. Because He came to steal, kill and destroy but Jesus came to give life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. So let us choose the doorway of opportunity. And that is Jesus. Hallelujah.